Hello everybody, welcome back to Five Fuel Junction and welcome to another review. Today we finally got a loco that has been long awaited for. It's been a long time coming, but after so, so long, it's finally here. We've finally got the brand new Dapol Class 59 in double O gauge. <laughs> oh my God, it's been a long time waiting for this. I'm pretty sure it was way back in 2015, I think it was, was when Dapol announced this. Um, I could be wrong with that, but from what I've been told, that's when uh, they announced this particular loco. <laughs> but finally, a good seven years later, we finally got it. It's finally here. It's in our hands. We can finally admire it, enjoy it. <laughs> oh, God, I can't, I can't believe this is so good to finally have it here. Um, there's four different liveries available um, that Apple have done uh, with this first batch anyway. Um, whether they're going to do more, I'm not too sure. I'm sure they will, because there's still quite a few liveries for them to do. So hopefully they will do some more. Um, it's mainly more modern ones that they ha have left. Um, but there's four liveries available with this first, first batch that they've done. And those include the Yeoman livery, then which was, I think, the first Yeoman livery. Because I think there was a couple of different ones. Um, but the first one, which was all mainly silver with a bit of blue. And um, there's that one, there's the Arc livery, which is the like olive, olive sort of greeny yellow colour and grey. And um, there's the, I think it's the National Power Blue, I think is what the livery's called. It's something like that, but it's like, it's like a National Blue, Power Blue and Grey or something sort of livery. <laughs> something like that. And I'm sure you know what I mean. And then there's also the DB Shanker Red, which is the one that we've got here. And they've also done, uh, they've done DCC Ready, they've done Sound, they've done uh, regular DCC Fitted. Um, there's also ones with smoke generators available. The one that we've got here is just a standard sound version. There's no smoke generator inside this one. Um, although I did th I did think for a moment that it's, uh, I might end up getting one with smoke. And I wasn't too sure because I have seen other people that have got um, their 59 for the sound and smoke. Um, but I never actually saw any, I never ended up seeing an option anywhere uh, to order a one with sound and smoke fitted. Although something tells me that the smoke uh, generator versions or the ones with sound and smoke, um, I think they had to be ordered by a certain time quite a while ago um, for you to get one of those. Um, but there are regular DTC fitted versions. There's regular DTC and smoke versions, which I think are probably the more easier ones with smoke to get hold of. And then there's the regular sound version and that regular sound version. And that is the one we got here. We can see on the box where it says DTC fitted. Uh, but if we look on the end of the box here, we can see it says DCC and sound fitted. A 21 pin sound decoder in here. Uh, the model code for this exact one is 4D 005 002S, uh, 176 scale, double O gauge, class 59. This one's 59206. DB Schenker named John F. Yeoman. Uh, model era, modern 2018 onwards. Um, I think you can get away with a bit earlier than that, surely. I mean, the D, I think, I can't remember how long uh, DB had the um, 59s for. Um, obviously, they're operated and owned by Freightliner now, um, but I think DB did have them quite for quite a while. Um, they owned, I think, only a few of the ones that they had, though. Um, well, they owned all of them, I'm pretty sure, apart from 59003, which is obviously GBRF. Um, but I'm pretty sure um, the ones that uh, DB had, um, only a few of them were in actually in the DB livery. I think it was actually only the 59-2s, um, which I think, well, seeing as there's, I think there's only six of them, and this is the last of the of them. I could be wrong, um, but I know in real life there's not an awful lot of the Class 59s. Um, there's only, when they ordered them in 1986, they only got a relatively small number of them. Um, I'm not sh sure why they didn't get more, um, but once they did get, obviously they were very happy with them. And of course, around 10 years later, they came up with the Class 66. And that's, that's obviously what we're mainly used to now. It's pretty much almost all 66s, uh, most freight. <laughs> Well, the vast majority of freight these days is obviously hauled by 66s, um, but obviously these came before, and then the 66s were obviously based on this design. Um, now, obviously, why did well, why did why did um, these locos come in real life? Um, well, obviously, back then in the 1980s, a lot of the fleet back then was first generation diesels, so you had like the 37s, um, the 47s, 33s, 31s, 20s all sorts like that. Um, obviously you did have slightly newer um, <laughs> locos around then, you had like the 56s um, and the 58s, um, but those weren't quite reliable enough and um, they weren't incredibly suitable, suitable for purpose. 
So they ordered a small number of the Class 59s um, for the, and these are ex pretty much exclusively for um, the heaviest of freight trains. Um, mainly, and most of them, you pretty much, well, almost all of them, and um, these days you see them mainly down in the southwest sort of area, mainly on quarries on lots of, from such as Mirhead and Watley, uh, hauling aggregates, uh, trains from there, going to various terminals around London and so forth. And that's mainly where you see them. You don't really see them up north that much, although uh, considering that they're owned by Freightliner now, um, I think you could, if you're lucky, maybe see one. Because I know, I'm pretty sure 59004, whilst it was out of service for a while, it was it was based at Lawley, Lawley Street um, depot near Leeds. Um, it was out there for a while. It came back into service fairly recently, uh, but it was out there for a while. So you may get the odd chance to see one up north. But mainly, you will only see them sort of down south um, on the uh, aggregates trains down here. Um, but over, yeah, overall, in real life, uh, very successful locos. All of them are still running today, as far as I know, um, in livery slots such as. I think there's still the f a few carrying DB. I have seen one in the D Brinders DB Red. Um, I think it was 592201 that I saw the most recently. Um, obviously, a few in Hanson livery, um, Hanson, Hanson aggregates livery as well, um, the, new, the new Freightliner. Uh, livery you can see them in as well i think that's mainly it i think there's not much more i think that's the all, all you really see to be honest um i can't remember exactly how many uh, 59s there are in real life but there are quite a few of them um and overall i think i prefer them to the 66s to be honest even though they obviously are quite similar um despite these being about 10 years older i'm um, obviously the bogeys are different the engines difference and everything Overall, despite them being quite similar, I think the 59s, I do prefer them. I think they just sound a bit better. Generally, I think they somehow, they, some, they somehow just have a slightly better look to them, I think. I'm not sure what it is, but they just generally look slightly better. Um, and they sound better to me. I think I just prefer the noise of the 59s compared to the 66s overall. Obviously, your opinion may differ, but that's just what I prefer, I think. Um, and, well, overall, <laughs> I don't, don't think there's much else to say, really. Um, overall, really good locos. And I'm sure that the model will be as well. Obviously, we're used to seeing the Hornby one slash Lima one. But it'll be good to sit, finally see a top-of-the-range, high-quality Class 59. Uh, so I think what we need to do is we need to open up the box and have a look. Uh, it's the typical uh, Dapol packaging. So you just lift up this lid. It's very, very nice packaging. And the first thing you'll be greeted with is we've got these instructions and everything here. Now, for some reason, um, I have very quickly looked through these instructions. But despite this being a sound fitted model, um, I don't remember seeing a list of sound functions anywhere, which was a bit strange uh, to me. I'm not sure why <laughs> there was no list of sound instructions inside, unless they forgot to put them in, or unless they've accidentally put a DCC ready loco or, D or a DCC fitted one in here by accident, uh, then I don't know, but um, I'm sure we'll be fine. So first we've got the double a uh, dapple double a gauge class 59 so this is the owner's guide um so this is just the usual stuff warranty um replacement parts um any parts that are missing all the general stuff i think we flip over onto the other side uh that's just i think more boring stuff uh yeah it's more in the warranty so we'll flip over that so what is this bit here uh okay so this looks like maybe a bit of dtc functions or lighting functions i think um, it looks something like that, so yeah, some information there about the lighting by the look of it, about the looks of it. Uh, fitting a decoder, uh, and see, oops, I've got some list there of CVs as well, that's interesting. Uh, then we've got, I guess this is the function key for the, uh, yeah, this is the function key, for, I think, for the regular DCC fitted versions. Um, but again, apart from that, there is no, uh, again, no list anywhere of of sound instructions. So that's uh, quite strange, I'm not sure why that is, um, but hopefully, I'm sure when we go to uh, play all of the sounds, we can work, work, most of them out, work most of them out. But anyway, if we put all of that just to one side, then we can have a look at the loco. So if we just uh, lift up this, there we go, get the thumb out of the way, and then we can see there. And already just looking through there, it does look good way way better already looks better than the uh, standard Hornby ones which I'll I'll bring one of them in, um, in, in shot in a minute so we can compare them but anyway if we just lift this out of the box there we go <laughs> and already <laughs> very very heavy lots and lots of weight there and that's good we want weight 
don't want it to be light, we want it to be nice and heavy. After all, this is a Class 59. They are much stronger than the 66s. <laughs> so we'd expect this to be very, very heavy. So we've got some accessories here, which is nice. So we've got uh, air dams, um, vacuum, I think, hoses, electrical cables. We've got separately fitted, uh, well, se separate name plates there uh, to fit over the printed ones. So that's good. I'll definitely be fitting them. I'll def definitely be fitting some of the buff beam detail as well. And we've also got a spare coupling there as well, by the looks. Uh, now, there's only one, I think. Now, actually, is one of the ends already detailed from the factory? Uh, no, doesn't look like it. Uh, not that I can see. Is that end detailed? Oh, packaging's falling off. Uh, oh, yes, it is. We have got one end detailed, and then at the other end, we've got a coupling there. So that's good. We can look, look at that more in more detail in a moment. Uh, but yeah, it's nice that we've got some nice accessories there. I'll put those to one side. We've got another bag here. Well, <laughs> it's not the bag, but uh, this must be the blanking plate. Uh, so if you want to convert the model back to DC, uh, then you can. Uh, I'm not sure why they didn't put that in the detail bag, though. That's a bit strange, <laughs> but at least it's there. So now if we lift up this flap, there we go, and then we can grab the loco itself, just get this plastic out of the way. Oh my god, she is incredibly heavy, really, really heavy. <laughs> there seems to be a few, Ooh, a bit of a cradle there. <laughs> they put in like these plastic cradles uh, for the wheels and the bogies to sort of sit on, I suppose it helps take some of the weight. I'm off some maybe the wheels or something. That's quite interesting. For some for a moment, I actually thought <clears throat> I thought they'd fitted part of the model wrong, but no, it's fine. It's just the packaging. But anyway, put all that to one side, and now we can look at the model itself. The first thing that comes to mind is I'm definitely getting Hatton's uh, Class 66 vibes from this. That's the first thing that definitely comes to mind. Um, the bogies look like, <laughs> let's say they look like they hang down a little bit low actually, um, but I'm sure they'll be fine. Once it's on the track, it'll be fine. The axle boxes are separately fitted and they do spin, and hopefully they'll spin uh, very nicely and they won't cause problems. Now let's just check actually, make sure all of the axle boxes are there. Uh, so I have seen only one person so far that's had a 59 arrive with missing axle boxes, uh, but nope, all of them are there. That's quite good. <laughs> Don't want any missing parts at all. Uh, the buffers are sprung. You've got an air dam uh, fitted to one end, and there is already some uh, detail there as well. We've got to see a little bit of a detail there, but you can fit more. Um, I'll definitely do that. You can see there's still, there's still some holes there uh, for you to fit uh, some of the detail. Uh, Separately fitted handrail as well. <clears throat> Sorry about that, my, my voice is <laughs> going a tiny bit. Uh, we have got uh, the lights there as well. Not sure if they look, they look a bit cloudy actually. It's a bit strange. I don't know if there's maybe glue marks on them or something. Uh, they just look a little bit cloudy, but I'm sure they'll be fine. Once they're working, I'm sure they'll look very good. Uh, what about cab detail? Dapo are usually uh, fairly good to work with uh, cab detail. Um, uh, yeah, there is some. Um, it's I don't think it's quite as good as other locos. Um, there's not masses. Let's try and have a look from the other side. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not as good as I was as, as as I was expecting, but there is some. The seats are a separate color, which is which is good. And you can see some detail in there, um, but it's not as good as you'd probably expect it to be. Uh, but again, it could be worse. We, we have seen worse. Uh, the cab doors do open. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that is quite surprising. <laughs> uh, seeing that the cab doors open. Um, well, well, I say it's surprising, I knew they did, um, but some people have been saying that these cab doors, and when Dapo obviously first uh, decided to design this model, these cab doors were a, a feature added on later, so they weren't designed um, into the original tooling. Um, and from looking at photos of people who've taken the body off and taken photos from the inside, it looks like Dapo have literally just sort of drilled out um, a hole for the door to go on. And quite a lot of people say opening doors, um, they don't really want them, they don't like them that much. Now, I know opening doors, they are quite a pointless feature, but they just look better, I think, compared to molded doors. They look better. It's nice to have the option there if anyone does, for whatever reason, want to use those doors, if they want to leave them open, 
which does quite ha happen quite often. You can quite fairly often uh, see 59s or 66s either parked up um, or actually running with a cab door open. So it does happen. And, and obviously there might be someone out there who might want to do that. Uh, so it's nice that they do have the option to open. Uh, the exhaust detail is pretty good. It's a self fitted piece and it looks really good, really good as well. Um, you might be able to get a smoke generator, smoke generator in there yourself. I'm not entirely sure which one Dapol you uh, have used um, on their model, but um, I'm sure you, you'll be able to get one in there yourself if you wanted to. Uh, the underframe detail is really, really good. You've got warning signs. You've got some colour to the tanks there. Um, the bow, the pickups aren't hidden in the best of ways. They are quite visible. But I'm sure once the loco is on the track, they'll be fine. Um, the bogies do seem to move about quite a lot. I'm not sure if <laughs> that's good or not. Um, but there is quite a lot of movement there. They are quite flimsy bogies, actually. Um, I'm not, that's a little bit concerning, if anything. Um, but uh, I'm sure they'll be fine. Again, once it's on the track, I'm sure they'll look fine. Uh, the couplings, what are the couplings like? They are kinematic couplings. That's quite nice. Uh, usually kinematic couplings... I'm not a fan of them. Uh, that snow plough's a little bit loose, actually. Um, that's a bit of a shame. It is a bit loose there. That's not <laughs> particularly good, um, but I'm sure we can uh, fix that. I don't think it's actually broken. I think it might just need a bit of glue or something to hold it on. Um, <laughs> it's Yeah, this is quite, it's quite loose. In fact, um, is it going to come off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not fitted on in the best um, of ways. In fact, uh, is it uh, damaged? Um it might be actually. Oh, another bit has fallen fallen off the snowplow. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of uh, detail there that's come off, uh, but it is quite delicate. Um, but we can easily fix that. I can easily um, put that back on. But uh, quality so far, not top, not definitely not top marks. Um, but overall, it's very very good. Overall, the quality, everything, ninety nine percent of the model has been put together very well. It does look very very good. It, it weighs an absolute ton. <laughs> But overall, it's really, really good. And now before we go up to the layout, I think what we have to do is we need to compare this uh, to the Hornby uh, Class 59. So if I just bring it to shot, here is one of the Hornby Class 59s. And if I just hold them next to each other, I think it's uh, very uh, easy to see <laughs> who the winner is. I think we can very clearly see which one is better. Now, I know, obviously, the Hornby one, it is Lima tooling, so it is very, very old. But to be honest, I can never really see Hornby um, updating this. Um, <laughs> well, they have updated it a bit over time. But in turn, definitely in terms of detail and the mechanism, um, it's definitely not as good. Nowhere near as good as the uh, brand new Dapper one there. Obviously, this one, the detail, it's there. Um, it weighs an okay amount. But in terms of strength, it can't haul um, an awful lot. Um, the motor is just a single uh, bogey, just two driven axles. It does have traction tyres. Um, this one has been upgraded a bit. This one has um, been fitted with lights. It's got sound, but that still doesn't make it anywhere near as good as this one. Uh, so without th further ado, let's go and put it on the track. Let's uh, see what the sound is like. Uh, give her a run and we'll see, um, well, we'll see how she runs. Okay, so here we are, and we're finally back over on this section of the layout again. Uh, so if we just put the loco on, uh, there's quite a lot of wheels uh, to get on, but it should be fairly simple. I think she's on. Uh, yes, she is. Um, now, I have already given her a quick test, uh, mainly just to see that she's definitely a sound-fitted model, and she definitely is. I can confirm this model is fitted with sound. Um, I thought I would just check it. It was just the fact that there was no list of sound instructions in the box that uh, made me a bit uh, slightly hesitant, uh, thinking have Dapol um, unintentionally, um, well, yeah, unintentionally sent me the wrong loco. But nope, they have. Um, just for some reason, there is no list of sound instructions in the box, at least with the one I came with. Um, obviously, you might be fine if you were to get one of these sound versions. Um, but certainly with mine, um, there is no list of sound instructions but I have been through, I've tested uh, most of the functions, and I do have a rough idea now um, of the list of functions uh, for the loco. Now, function zero uh, just does the headlights. Um, if I change, change direction, there we go. So we've got the headlights there, and if I change direction, obviously you can see there are no tail lights um, on automatically. They do seem to flash, though. 
and I'm not too sure why, but um, it could just be the way the model was wired or set up, whatever. Uh, but yeah, the tail lights are on a separate function. They are on function 10. And if I might, if I just try that now, actually, I'll just show you. So function 10 is on. Um, they have their own little sound with them as well. And now if I change direction, you can see there now, we have got the tail lights and they are all working on both ends as well. Um, so it's a nice feature, I suppose. If you don't want the tail lights on, then you don't have to. Uh, apologies if you can hear the the whine from the DCC, um, but nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. Anyway, if we just turn the tail lights off again, and um, we go back. Uh, so function uh, one obviously does the uh, engine sounds, but we'll try that again later. Then we'll, we'll give her a, a proper test later on. Because um, one thing with Dapol is they always say that their locos, they don't require any running in. However, whether a loco is new or not, or whether a manufacturer says it does need running in or doesn't, I re highly recommend always doing it. It's not going to hurt, is it? Especially because it will just pr it just proves if you run a loco around your layout um, for about half an hour in each direction, for a start, obviously it um, helps lubricate the mechanism, gets it all bed in and gets it used to running. But um, it also, quite importantly, it just shows to make sure um, if a loco is is happy with your layout, obviously if a loco does not like your layout for whatever reason, um, then obviously it's good to just try that out. So obviously you don't want to spend get a new loco, then immediately spend loads of time um, weathering it, detailing it, doing whatever, getting it ready for your layout, only to suddenly find that it doesn't like your layout for whatever reason. Um, so I always recommend running in a loco. Um, obviously I'm pretty sure Dapo they um, run in their locos, or at least give them a good test at the factory when they're produced, um, which is probably why they say that they don't need any special running in. However, I always recommend doing it um, because this is DAPO and they've probably already given it um, some sort of running. I'll probably only give it about 20 minutes in each direction uh, just to make sure it's still fine. Um, she is a little bit noisy when going in one direction, um, but apart from that, um, from the quick test that I've given her, um, the mechanism is very good, it's very smooth. Um, overall, no complaints with it. Um, but we will go through, uh, before we get a, give her a run in, um, we will go through um, all of the functions. So function two is one of the horns. And function three is another horn. And they do sound very, very good as well. Uh, function four, I'm not sure what that does. That sounds like maybe the fan or the compressor or something. I'm not too sure. Uh, function five. A very deafening guard whistle. Uh, function six. That sounds like coupling or buffering to me, something, or something, something similar. Uh, function seven. That sounds like air release or maybe brake release or something. Um, function eight. Uh, doesn't do anything. Function nine. Uh, doesn't do anything either. So I, I'm guessing maybe function eight and function nine, they might be notch up and notch down uh, for the engine. Um, we'll try that later. Uh, function 10, we've obviously already done because it's the tail lights. Functions 11 and 12 are the cab lights. Uh, well, no, tail light actually, if it's just function 11, it's the cab lights. And they are, they are directional depending what direction you tell the loco to go in. And they also have their own sound. And if we change direction, we can see it comes on at the other end as well. So that's quite good. Uh, function 12, uh, nothing. We might have to have the engine running for that. Uh, function 13. That sounds like coupling to me. That definitely sounds like coupling. And then taking off is uncoupling, maybe? I'm not too sure. Or it could just be another process of the coupling. I'm not too sure. Uh, function 14. I think that's cab door slam. <laughs> function 15. Uh, okay, function 15 um, is the marker lights. Uh, that's a bit different. Uh, so I'm guessing if, if we... And then if we do function zero, do we then get all of the headlights then? Oh. Oh, I see. So function 15 on, then that then that disables uh, the headlights. That's quite interesting. So the marker lights, unless these are only for shunting, maybe? Um, I could be wrong. And they're going to come on again. <laughs> Uh, they they don't want to come back on now, or is that because I've got function zero on? Uh, no, function zero is off. I'm not too sure why they don't want to come back on. The sound the sound for them is working. 
Now let's try turning function zero back on, see if that does anything. Oh yeah, there we go. So yeah, function uh, to have with function zero on and then turning function 15 on. And that does, or is that nighttime rain lights actually? I think that might actually be nighttime rain lights. I just, I just check what they're like on the other end. Ah uh, yes, function 15, uh, sorry about that. Function 15 is the nighttime ring lights, and um, they're just not <laughs> quite as good on this end. And um, the bulb is quite dim, I'm um, not too sure why. Um, I won't be using them, but it's night that's very, very good that we've got that. So we've got nighttime ring lights on function 15, and yeah, that's very good. Yeah, function 16. There's another horn. Uh, function 17 is also a horn. Function 18 is also another horn. Function 19, also another horn, in case you guessed. So that's very good, so we've got plenty of horns. Uh, function 20. Yeah, I'm not too sure what that's done. Oh, I see. I think function... is function... is function 20 another set of lights? It's definitely changing the, the size that the um, headlight is on. I'm hoping you can see that. <laughs> so we've got another um, functionality, bit of functionality of the lights, so that's quite good. Uh, function 21. So that's part of the startup sequence maybe that you can play if you want to. Uh, function 22. I'm not too sure what that is, but whatever it is, it sounds quite good. Uh, function 23. The Spyrex valve, that sounds quite good. Uh, function 24. Nope. Uh, nope, that's it. So function 23, which is the Spyrex valve, is the last sound, or the last function anyway. So overall, not too bad. So I'll probably, actually no, before I fire up the sound, um, I will go and run the loco in actually very quickly. And then once I've done that, we'll come back and we'll stick, fire up the engine sounds. And then we'll, cu we'll cu up to couple her up to a train as well. And we'll get her running and we'll see what she's like. So anyway, I'll get her running in and I'll be back in a moment. There we go, the loco took a bit of time to respond. There we go. Okay, here we are, we are finally back. The Loco has now been uh, given a nice running in, and she's definitely running, uh, well, to us, there isn't, to us, I haven't really much, much difference um, since um, before she was run in, but at least she has got some miles on the clock now. She's been around the layout in both directions for about 20 minutes or so in each direction, um, which is perfectly fine, um, considering that I'm sure Depol um, do uh, run in or give, or give their locals a good run before they uh, leave the factory. Yeah, but she should be uh, nice and used to running now. The low, the mechanism uh, should be nicely fed in, and hopefully we should uh, now get some good performance from her. However, despite that, <laughs> saying uh, talking about good performance, there is there does seem to be uh, something not one hundred percent right about the performance about this loco. It's just quite a noisy runner, to be honest. And whilst it is very smooth and the speed is very constant, and overall the performance is very very good. <laughs> the mechanism in this in this class fifty nine, it just seems to be a bit of a noisy one. If I just get up to move for you, there we go. It takes the decoder, it takes the decoder to get a bit, a bit of time to respond. So you might not be able to hear it that much if I get it to come the other way again, but a bit faster. emergency stop to get stopped before she crashes into our wagons. There we go. Yeah, the, the, there's just something not quite right about it. Well, it's, I'm sure it's nothing serious, it's just the way the model is. Um, the performance is just a bit noisy. The motor's a bit of quite a noisy and squeaky one. Um, I think it's mainly the motor. The actual gear train and everything, um, I don't think is too bad, but the mo most of the noise um, is coming from the motor itself. 
and obviously you do get motor noise uh, most of the time anyway which can't really be helped but i think the main issue with this with this loco is i think it might be where the flywheels are spin through um on that um, around there they just seem to squeak uh, quite a lot now there might be some squeaking coming from the worm gears uh, maybe i'm not too sure but there's definitely some squeaking of some sort coming from the uh, motor shafts where the flywheels spin through. Now, so that can't, I'm sure that can't that can't be helped all the time. But um, hopefully, um, with some oil and a little a little service, hopefully that will will help. But it's not really ideal, especially when when she's at higher speeds, and the mechanism is quite noisy and it is a little bit off-putting. Now, obviously, your experience might be different. Uh, your 59 might perform faultlessly and will be completely silent. But this particular one, the mechanism, um, it's not really ideal. It does annoy me a little bit, and I am going to have to mark it down for that, unfortunately. But it's only a minor issue. Obviously, it's not, caught, well, it's not causing any problems by any means. The Loco, as I've said, is running very, very well. But it's just a shame that the mechanism is a bit of a noisy one. Now, again, I know it's not... <laughs> Obviously, that's not nothing, not really a problem with that. To be honest, like so you do, you do get locos who run noisily, and you do get, you do get one that run, run quiet. It just probably depends. It's just the way they're built, the way all of the parts have been made and produced. Um, just when they go together, they just by chance produce either a loco that runs really silently or one like this where it's quite noisy. But overall, apart from that, no major complaints with it. It is running very, very well despite the noise. But so all we need to do now is we can now start up the engine sounds, uh, hear what they're like. I will quickly bring around her wagon that she's going to be pulling. It's only a short rake, <laughs> but it's better, better than nothing. We've got six of the uh, Dapol Yeoman, um, I think it's the JHA hoppers. I, could be, I think that's what they are. Um, all six of them in Yeoman livery, and obviously it's two end hoppers and four middle ones. The back one has been fitted with a Dakota and it's got a flashing light and I can control the uh, tail lights on that independently. And hopefully I'll get a few more of them, uh, plus Dapol are obviously doing these wagons in the Yeoman livery as well now. So I'll definitely be getting um, quite a few of them when they come out. And hopefully we'll get a nice long train for this uh, loco to haul. But anyway, as she is, um, it should be fine. Certainly be fine for this, for this video anyway. So let's start up the engine and we'll get her running. There we are, and let's get her going. And I think you'll agree, she's running very well. The mechanism is quite noisy, especially going around corners. There does seem to be a little bit of noise from the gears, and the motor is a bit of a noisy one. But overall, she's great. An excellent performer, excellent detail, at an amazing price. What else could you ask for? <laughs> she's just fantastic. If you want to get one of these locos, I recommend you get one, definitely, for sure because they are well worth the money. So why can't the, why can't companies like Batman and Hornby do this? Why can't they produce a logo that's like this, with amazing detail, really good mechanism, excellent sound, at a good price? If Batman had did this, or if Hornby had done this logo, the DCC Ready versions would probably cost about what this sound version does. Remember, these sa these sound versions are two hundred and fifty pounds from Dapol. And you think a Backman loco, a non sound or a non sound non sound uh, Batman loco, would probably cost about that much. And yet here come Dapol with their brand new Class Fifty Nine, and it's as amazing as this. 
and yet the price is so, so good. <laughs> so it just shows what you can do for an amazing price. But yeah, overall, absolutely fantastic. Amazing logo. With, every, with absolutely everything in it, everything, well, everything you could possibly ask for, to be honest. If you want one, definitely get one. And now for some ratings for the brand new Dapol Class 59 in DB Shank livery with DTC Sound. Now overall, to start off with the detail, overall I cannot fault the detail. The amount of uh, separately fitted parts on this model and the overall detail is just fantastic. It's got to be 10 out of 10. The amount of detail on the Loco is fantastic. You've got various parts all over the place. The livery is applied really well. <laughs> the amount of detail that they've got into this model it's, it's definitely what you'd expect from a brand new loco. You wouldn't expect anything less like this. You've got the opening doors, sprung buffers, lots of handrails, various painted details. <laughs> Overall, I cannot fault it. It's just fantastic. And so especially for the price, it's just top notch. It's just, I really can't fault it at all. Definitely a top score for detail. The performance, <laughs> definitely not quite as good. Whilst the performance is fantastic, and overall, you really can't fault the performance on this loco. The only issue for me really is the noise. <laughs> this model is a bit of a loud runner. The mechanism, whilst very good and it's definitely a top of the range mechanism, all wheel drive, all wheel pickup, big centrally mounted motor with two flywheels. Whilst it's all there, the mechanism it is a bit of a noisy one to be honest and I obviously am not really a fan of noisy mechanisms. Now it's good that this model obviously it, it does have the, um, obviously the factory fitted DTC sound. So overall that does help obviously help you forget about the noise but I still know it's I still know it's there and you can still hear it a little bit underneath the sound from the speaker and overall just because of that because it's not it's not the quietest mechanism in the world because of that I have knocked it down slightly now I know obviously some of you may disagree with me on this but for me for a loco of this price tag you would expect top-notch performance you would not expect the same mechanism that's quite as noisy as this now it could just be that it's under lubricated but I did take the body off at one point so just um, about halfway through we were running in just to make sure that it was definitely all lubricated um, obviously again some of you might disagree with me doing that because obviously I'm doing a review and you might and you might sort of um, <laughs> well I don't know you might accuse me of, of tampering with the model and everything but literally all I've done is I just ensured that it was lubricated. I did, I will admit, I did add a little bit of my own lubrication just to make sure that there was plenty there. There's definitely plenty of lubrication in the mechanism. So while it's running as noisy as it is, because it is a little bit annoying, it's just not, it's not quite, it's not really that acceptable to be honest. So just because of that minor issue, but it's not nothing major because again, the performance is good. It's smooth, it's constant. The loco is very, very strong. Overall, it's not too bad, just because of that little noise issue, for me, it's not a 10 out of 10 uh, performance. The quality too, whilst really good, it does have a, a couple of little minor things here and there. And the first thing is obviously the snow plow, or well, the air dam, that obviously came off when we took them all out, out of the box. Now, these air dams, they're not glued, and I believe they are just uh, fit, friction fitted into their little plugs on the loco. And it could just be that this one wasn't fitted uh, properly at the factory, or just had a little knock during transit or something but you shouldn't have any bits at all falling off a loco especially a brand new one when you purchase it so for that that has marked the quality down slightly for me also i think the pickups could have been hidden a bit better the pickups are very visible they they're definitely more visible than a lot of other locos even locos that are much older than this the pickups could have been hidden a bit easier they could have painted them black if they wanted to they could have designed them differently so they were a bit better hidden but for me they're just a little bit too visible and for me the bogeys i think they just they just seem to hang down too far now i know obviously this isn't a problem when the locos on the track but they just look a tiny bit flimsy but overall for me apart from that apart from those tiny tiny issues overall the quality is very good the entire model is put together well it's painted very very well it feels nice and sturdy in the hands Overall, I can't fault the quality really, to be honest. The value for money as well, 
overall no major complaints with it it's the only reason it's not a 10 out of 10 value for money because i really did want to give it 10 out of 10 for value for money because 250 pounds for a big heavy brand new diesel locomotive with dc sound not just typical hornby cheap tts proper full-fledged dc sound with a very good quality speaker it's a zimo decoder that's inside these as well so it's a very high quality decoder i really did want to give the model 10 out of 10 for value for money but just because of the little quality issues and the slight issue with the performance because of that i just couldn't do that so i had to give it 9 out of 10 but overall it's a really good model and that's and it's very well deserving of its overall score of no 9.25 out of 10 overall it is a fantastic loco i really recommend you get one of these if you want one because they are absolutely fantastic not 100 percent but definitely definitely nearly there just a couple of minor tweaks or, or little well, i suppose little quality upgrades and then it would be an absolute 10 out of 10 performer and definitely 10 out of 10 for quality but overall as it is it's still very good absolutely fantastic loco if you want one definitely get one because you will not be disappointed